Good afternoon, everyone. The climate spin doctors in action. Arctic warming behind the crazy weather. They say that losing half of the ice in 30 years is causing this cold weather. Uh, let's look at NSIDC. Almost all the ice is there. The article continues. Look at all that cooling over North America and Alaska. They show it again. But this matches right up with the Maunder minimum temperature reconstructions. Thanks for verifying we're going into a grand solar minimum mini ice age. Climate models underestimating cooling effects of cloud cycles. Oh my gosh. Now they're trying to show us pretty pictures to say we forgot to add this little part into the IPCC climate models. But Joe Nova, excellent, excellent article on TSI reconstructions. And what happens from this point forward as we continue in the cooling of the Atlantic Ocean that drives temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. And please remember to join us tomorrow for our three-way discussion between Christian of Ice Age Farmer, Diamond of Oppenheimer Ranch Project, and myself, David Dubine of ADAPT2030. We're going to explain what the Grand Solar Minimum is and how you can prosper and get ready for the changes that are coming. But the mainstream media really doesn't want you to know that these changes are upon you. A, they've been feeding you misinformation for the last, what, three decades, and also they're worried about their careers now, so they're going to continue with this winter weather climate spin. Gore and man, we already know that they're frauds. But Catherine Hayhoe, jumping in, trying to say that because the Great Lakes are freezing, it's because of humid, warm air. I, I'm really at a loss for words. I am. Next article, is the Arctic warming behind this year's crazy winter weather? There has to be possible ties between climate change and the recent spate of frigid weather. I was told we were warming, but now they're trying to spin it so that hot equals cold. Even in the second blue sentence that I've highlighted, losing half of the Arctic ice over the last 30 years. Sea ice extent, January 30th, 2018. That orange line is the 30-year baseline average. How much missing ice is there? Are you kidding me? That is not even one-fifth of one-eighth of 30%. Are you kidding me? That person should lose their tenureship wherever they are teaching at a university, and they should be fired on the spot. But I will give it to them. They have great graphics inside the article here. Notice the cold blob over Canada, United States, North America area, and that extreme heat over Alaska. Also look at Western Africa. Notice where the cool is. And they even go out and highlight the heat over Alaska. And I will just bring you back to the Grand Solar Minimum Temperature Reconstruction. And I will say thank you for verifying that we're repeating the cycle. Same heat in the same places. Same cold in the same places. And they even go on to show this amazing graphic that shows the exact same thing to double up the verification. Thank you so much, Professor. And then we'll take a look at the North Pole view here so you can see where it's really going to cool across Asia. And we can start to see the same matchups right now, this amazing cold that's coming across China, Japan, all the way down to Taiwan with snow forecasts this weekend and the heat in the same exact areas of Alaska. We're just repeating a cycle, but the media will go out of their way to tell you that Greenland was melting to infinity this last summer. So let's look at the temperatures. Now, as far as I know, I was taught that water melts at 33 degrees and above, or zero Celsius, probably one Celsius and above. But when we look at these temperatures here, this is June 25th to July 16th, a full three weeks of the maximum melt season across Greenland. And what do we see? Minus 20, minus 30, minus 20, minus 30. I really don't know how much melting occurred during this time, but this is conveniently left out of the news feeds. And also when we look at the DMI, the Danish Meteorological Institute of the Arctic Temperatures, that area at the blue line, that's the melt season. So anything above that is the melt season. And you can see how far below the average temperatures this last year's melt season was. But they continue to spout that it was the warmest year ever and everything melted 
Well, actually, it really didn't. Look at the information. And if you say, well, I just don't trust that Greenland temperature data from the temperature station there, I'm with you on that. Let's jump over to DMI's total ice mass budget on Greenland. Now that dark brown line at the top, that was last year's ice increase in snow on Greenland. This year I've circled in the orange. The blue started off higher than normal. We're back at the baseline, but last year's gains really make no sense because that was the most ice recorded in the last 12 years. So something has flipped and switched. I don't know why they're not talking about the changes in the climate. We like to talk about the hot, but they never talk about the cold. And also, from prestigious Princeton University, they had to increase the margin of error to understand how cloud cycles shall affect us. Meaning, oops, they were off by one to two watts per square meter of energy because of the daily cloud cycle. But wait, I thought the science was settled. Did they not explain that to us? The science is settled except, uh, sorry, we're off by our watts per square meter because of the cloud cycle. So anyway, they put out these pretty pictures to try to explain what they've just found in the way of albedo effect in different times of the day in different parts of the world. So let me white out that for you there after you've taken a look at the text. Blue is low cloud coverage. Red is high cloud coverage. Now they tried to map this through the day to see, oh, where there were an error over the last 30 years while they were trying to do climate models. But anyway, somebody who is on the money, Joe Nova. I've linked everything below. I really hope you visit her site. She does spectacular work. Has this incredibly in-depth article about TSI going back to 1600. Now that deep purple is a drop off and what do we see in today's measurements oh steep drop off that is predicted with the grand solar minimum that there would be a decrease in the tsi and an increase in galactic cosmic rays so what do we see exactly what was forecast going into a grand solar minimum but all those three past articles I showed you keep holding on to this old dinosauric paradigm of global warming and heaven forbid we even talk about the NAO, Atlantic Ocean temperatures, they're dropping. And if you look through time, the AMO, the NAO, they're intertwined and they dictate the temperatures of the Northern Hemisphere. That is decreasing. We're heading into a grand solar minimum and the Pacific Decadal Oscillation is also going down. So now we have three downward factors and nobody's talking about this we really need to think about the impacts on our agriculture and the yields there's massive rains across france these massive unbelievable snowstorms in the mountains of italy and switzerland this is all related to the nao and the amo go back 400 years and take a look at the shift are you getting ready for the coming changes because you should be